Hey, what's up? Gleb here for CreativeStream.com. Welcome! In this episode, I want to talk about rigging, mechanical rigging to be exact, and I will show some behind the scenes of this robo inspired by the amazing bleep character of Animation Mentors and used with permission. So let's get started. As you remember, we teamed up with Jeanne Landry, aka Blender Pirate, a few months ago to create this project. At the time, Geno was experiencing enormous difficulties with his Blender career and with trying to make it all work on Blender market and so on. And we thought that it could be a nice opportunity to help each other. We thought with AD that probably we could help a bit to make it work. And after a few months of adventures, let me just say that it seems to me that we did it. And I'm excited to present it to you. So meet a fully-fledged commercial video course on HUD surface rigging in Blender for absolute beginners by Jeanne Landry and Creative Shrimp. Yes! So in this video I, I would like to share my subjective impressions and some behind the scenes about this project and why I think it's very important for Geno and for Creative Shrimp and for pretty much everybody who loves rigging in Blender and wants to up their rigging game. And especially when the timing for embarking on the rigging journey is the best simply because Obviously, we have Eevee, uh, the best real-time render engine ever designed by humankind. And so it's a pure pleasure to work with real-time updates in the viewport. Even a non-rigger like me can enjoy the process immensely, even if it's just auto-animating some keyframes and watching it all wiggle and move. And what I find deeply exciting about the rigging style of Geno is that he doesn't simply shows how to bind the pieces of the mesh to respective bones and make it move, but that Geno shows how to expose all the controls for automating actions like unfolding of the propeller. Like you see here, it's just one simple animation or setting the RPM or rotations per minute on the propeller via driver. And throughout this rigging series for beginners, which is approximately six hours long, or maybe even a bit longer than that, uh, Jenna goes through all the stages of rigging this robo and uh, preparing it for animation, with animation as a final goal in mind. And even though the course was recorded using 2.83 LTS long-term release version of Blender, uh, we kind of experimented with Blender 2.9 Alpha, for, for things like motion blur in Eevee, which is simply astounding. If you would like to increase the amount of motion blur, you can increase the shutter and the number of steps control how smooth the, this effect is. That's probably the only thing that is different in cycles, the number of steps. Otherwise, it is completely un indistinguishable from cycles, from my point of view. It adds a lot to any animation and in in this sense, it's related directly to rigging. Let me show you something from the teaser, where we, where we can see this effect in action. So this propeller also shows a little bit of motion blur, but there is a lot of depth of field there, so let's take a look at some other frame. Yeah, it's Eevee, completely real-time in the viewport, but without the motion blur, and a few seconds per frame in the final render. And this is not some kind of a game engine. This is the place where we work and that level of quality that we can expect from our viewport really adds something to the overall experience of rigging. Honestly, personally, I didn't expect this to be such immensely pleasurable experience when all the settings are exposed and you can tweak it easily and the legs are standing on the ground automatically. And all the other constraints are set up in such a way to get out of your way once you start animating. And with the simplify option turned on, and with the subdivision levels set to zero in the viewport, it looks a little bit hard-edged, obviously, but it works in real time perfectly. And for the final render, we can just uncheck the simplify and it will be smoothed out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the example even has the USB port hidden inside, but I forgot how to open this door and so on. And what I love about the way Jenna presents things is that he hides the unnecessary controls, so you're left practically with just a few gizmos that you can easily reposition, rotate and so on. And the elaborate set of constraints 
set up preemptively and all the actions that have been assigned to particular elements they just make it a breeze to control various parameters like for example the color of the light the intensity it's hooked up to the drivers and jenna shows in the course how the constraints are set up how the drivers are set up on the iris on the lights on the inverse kinematics slash forward kinematics legs and how it's all connected together and works within this system that is very exciting believe me and now i want to share a few style decisions and concept art decisions that we went through while designing the robo this was our first iteration of the design we ended up creating this uh, spherical droids that unfolded into this spider-like thing and right away we established the color scheme for the cores the prominent yellow contrasted by the monochrome elements mostly gray 50 shades of gray type of style and while we liked the overall vibe we still kept experimenting with the top portion of the mesh for a while because whoa the boxy shape for example we thought that maybe it would be easy enough to show in the course because this spherical design ended up being way too complicated uh, to be properly presented it would take probably 20 hours just to show how all these hydraulics work even though it was pretty cool it was awesome i think <laughs> maybe a little bit too complex um, but as jana said uh, he learned a lot while rigging this robo and it goes along the lines of saying that probably the best way to learn the thing is to try to show somebody how to make this thing and uh, i love this design these are not brains these are hands folded into the body and then after we discovered that the previous design was a bit on the complex side so we kept searching and because we loved the simplicity of the blip design by animation vendors we ended up creating something along these lines even though the rigging elements were designed according to what we would need to show in the course what jenna would need to show in the course the first read of the visual shape and the overall vibe just made us realize that we probably want to create our version of blip the long lost relative from the alternative universe mm -hmm. and so we decided that it would be cool to reach out directly to animation mentors and ask for their permission to use the design of blip and as it turned out they were happy with us basing our design on their character that was fortunate of course because all the third part of the course the robotic rigging was based on our version of this character which as they pointed out was initially created by dave from the design studios based on the bobby Beck's idea so hey some portion of the dna of this thing came all the way to blender so now we can experience it in the open source software i think it's great oh and the fully rigged and prepared for animation version of the robo is available for the course owners and in fact all the tutorials are accompanied by the project files each of them mm -hmm. so that's for the design as for the structural design of the course itself it's split in a few sections the first one is theoretical while the second and the third one are more practical well uh, technically the second one is slightly more practical than the first while the third one is the most practical so yeah mm, the first one is theoretical and the second one is hands-on the third one is robot right in the first one we get presented with the various rigging concept for beginners like constraints relationship between different rigging elements setting up the cbs to control the rig or custom bone shapes that sort of stuff building a hierarchy wrapping our heads around a quaternion versus Euler rotation and so on and so forth after theory the second part of the course just let me show you something uh, the second part of the course deals with the hands-on examples simple rigging elements like joints uh, hydraulics pistons that sort of stuff i believe pistons will be added a few weeks later though because we need to fix something but anyway i cannot hide my fascination with the way the things are set up in, in this portion of the course because relatively complex motion is achieved simply by moving one thing from the user perspective because everything else is hooked up to it uh, via constraints and drivers 
in this case it's simply constrained and so after watching the tutorial and following along because all the project files are available you end up with something like that where you can control the motion of the entire system by adjusting one property of just one element and everything else is hidden from uh, from view from the user perspective when everything is organized and presented properly that's something that still surprises me actually how intuitive the process can be even a seemingly complex one like rigging when you approach it from a certain perspective i think that's one of the superpowers of jena the impeccable ability of simplifying things for the end user like for example i learned a lot while participating in this project before embarking on this rigging adventure i couldn't have imagined that you can rig something like dangling wires uh, by utilizing bendy bones and then somehow binding everything to control shapes just a few circles and you drag these circles around and everything starts animating in the most realistic way possible that's crazy because all my previous experience with rigging haven't looked like this at all it looked like a hot mess of hierarchies bones and you needed manual tweaks to make it work and if I had to change anything, woo, it meant just going back all the way to beginning and animating millions of tiny things that you can't even select in the viewport properly because they are too small and you need it to zoom in all the way. Do do do. But anyway, the first and the second parts of the course, the theoretical parts, are just preparation for the robo rigging. That's the main thing, namely how to rig the legs all the things related to inverse kinematics and forward kinematics and how to switch between them when you need how the typical constraints need to be set up and actions automated when needed and the rigging elements were designed in such way to present us with different set of challenges how to rig an iris a propeller a leg stuff like that typical robotic stuff with some intriguing side quests, for example, how to animate a material property, which isn't related to position, rotation or scale, how to rig and animate the intensity and the color of the light, for example. So in the best case scenario, once you went through the theory part of the course, all the way through the hands-on examples to the robotic rigging, you'll have a solid understanding of how it all works. I can't wait for you folks to experience these and I hope you will enjoy it and then we will together fix Jenna's career uh, and we'll show Jenna that the decision to participate in this quite a risky and complicated project was right. So personally I'd like to encourage you to click the link in the description and get yourself a copy of the course, but only if you feel comfortable with the price. Drink more coffee and we'll change the world of computer graphics.